Hey there YouTube lovers, my name is BB8 and today I am going to review Overwatch 2 for the third time. You're probably wondering, BB8 why am I reviewing the same game for a third time one year apart? But this time, we are looking at the second year of Overwatch 2. With a free-to-play live service game like Overwatch 2, the score can change over time. So I think an annual review for Overwatch 2 will give viewers a brief idea on what I think of a game one year apart. But with new Overwatch-style games entering the market this year, like Concord, which only lasted two weeks, and Marvel Rivals, which will be releasing in December, which I will be reviewing. But back to Overwatch 2, my opinion has nothing to do with the backlash that the game has received for the development decisions. My opinion will be based on the game itself. So, without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? For the gameplay, the core gameplay of Overwatch 2 still stands out to me compared to other FPS shooters on market, such as TF2, Valorant, which I still need to review given that it did launch on console this year, and the other two that I mentioned above being Concord and Marvel Rivals. The new heroes introduced to the game each year add more strategies to the gameplay such as Venture being able to dig underground and hide from enemies, and Juno gaining high ground just to deal damage to enemies and heal teammates simultaneously. While some older heroes like Sombra and Wrecking Ball have had reworks, the new heroes to release in the past year have kept things fresh. When it comes to the new heroes in Overwatch 2, the second year didn't have as many new heroes as the first year, but we did have a solid variety with Malga, Venture, and Juno. Malga did have an interesting mix of brawling, ranged, and defensive abilities, even though I hoped for his moveset to involve ghost sharks, as seen in the fan-made concept art, and even without it, Malga is a decent hero. Venture is a milestone inclusion for Overwatch 2 due to their non-binary identity. Their moveset is really fun to play as using a drill gun and being able to drill holes on the ground was super fun to play. The battle pass within the season of their debut wasn't particularly for me, but Venture was probably the best part of their debut season. And probably my favourite hero to come out of Overwatch 2's second year is Juno. I really enjoyed her as a character. Her characterization and moveset brought Juno up as one of my favourite heroes alongside D.Va, Kiriko, and, and Mercy. I loved the character design and the casting choice of San Fei Huan, since she does perfectly fit Juno as a character. And personality, considering that San Fei Huan previously voiced Haru Okumura in Persona 5. And for the seasons, I'm going to take a different approach to talking about the seasons this year, because I'm going to talk about them in my ranking order instead of order of release. So, if I was to rank every season in Overwatch 2 that happened in the past year, I would rank them like this. In last place, Season 11, Super Mega Ultra Watch. Not just my least favorite Overwatch season in the past year, but probably my least favorite season in the entirety of Overwatch 2's run. Only because the battle pass wasn't that interesting for me, and the skin designs were pretty generic as well. I wouldn't have minded getting Power Rangers based skins in Overwatch, but having a whole battle pass surrounding it, I just don't think the skin designs were that interesting to me to have a whole battle pass surrounding it. But with the exception of Lifeguard Kiriko, which is a skin I'm probably going to get down the line. In 5th place, we have Season 9 Champions. This season just focused on the competitive overhaul without any form of interesting theming in the Battle Pass. In 4th place, we have Season 10 Venture 4th. 
wasn't a bad season since the introduction of Venture, which they are fun to play as, but the only reason I even purchased the Battle Pass this season was to get Mythic Kiriko with the addition of the Mythic Shop, which I will talk about in a bit. In third place, we have Season 8 Call of the Hunt. Even though I didn't like the Mythic skin as much, I still think it was a fun season in terms of theming and the inclusion of Malga. In second place, has to go to the latest season, Season 12, New Frontiers. Despite not including any new Mythic skins for D.Va, I love the Egyptian Mythology Reaper skin, which even if I didn't have the chance to purchase it due to the lack of timing to complete the Battle Pass, it is a Mythic skin I'm hoping to pick up in the future. And first place has to go to Rise of Darkness, which was probably the best season to release in the past year, thanks to the Diablo theme collab and the Dark theme Battle Pass. And even though Hanzo is not my favorite hero, his mythic skin did catch my attention and is on my wish list. For the collabs, if you don't know me already, when it comes to collabs in Overwatch 2, I just leave it if Diva Kiriko and now Juno are not involved with the collab. Season 7's Dark theme did play a big part in the Diablo collab, like I just said about Hanzo. His Mythic skin is one I'm hoping to pick up in the future with the addition of the Mythic Shop. Despite not being familiar with their music, apart from Perfect Night, which released as a collab song for Overwatch 2, the Le Seraphim collab did have some well-designed skins for D.Va and Kiriko. I don't own Kiriko's yet, but I'm hoping to get it at some point. And I know this is the most common collab to come out of Overwatch 2, has, has probably been to do with anime. And Cowboy Beat Bop has joined the trend alongside One Punch Man, which did one in the first year. And while I do like anime personally, we didn't have a new skin for either D.Va or Kirigo, so I just passed on this collab. Transformers was actually well implemented into Overwatch 2. Even though I didn't get any of the skins, I do like the Optimus Prime Reinhardt and Bumblebee Bastion. I do think the Transformers collab would have been better timed with the new animated Transformers movie, Transformers 1, which isn't out in the UK yet, but I do think releasing the Transformers collab with Transformers 1 would have made a lot of sense. The Porsche collab, which was a random one, because I I was mainly invested in this collab because D.Va had a skin come out of it. Because D.Va's mech resembling an actual Porsche made it more fun, especially with the unique sound effects from other D.Va skins. The World of Warcraft collab was one that made sense as well, considering that Diablo had a collab before. And we didn't have any of my top heroes as skins in this collab, but it was interesting to see World of Warcraft make the mix. And the only collab I know coming out after the upload of this review is My Hero Academia. May not feature a skin for D.Va, but Kiriko is featured as Himiko Toga, and Juno is featured as Uravity. And this is actually one collab I'm looking forward to taking part in. And Overwatch 2 has done a solid job at offering a diverse range of collabs, such as anime, gaming, automotive, and even K-pop with the addition of Le Seraphim made it a fresh mix of collabs. And while I mainly get interested in collabs when one of my favorite heroes is involved, I do appreciate the effort that Overwatch 2 puts into these collabs. And finally, before we close up the review, we have the new features. I said I would only do another annual review for Overwatch 2 if they introduced a new feature to the game that caught my attention, and that's where the Mythic Shop comes in. The Mythic Shop is a great feature when it comes to giving players the choice of either a past Mythic skin if they didn't have the chance to buy the Battle Pass previously, or the newer Mythic skin 
which does help reduce the fear of missing out. And it is a clever way to make sure that Mythic skins remain accessible even after the season ends. Even though I wish they did this with the Battle Pass skins, it would have been interesting to see a third shot for past Battle Pass cosmetics as well, or just add them to the Hero Gallery since the Ultimate Battle Pass bundle is too expensive for me, especially if there is a particular skin stuck behind a paywall like Heist Diva, for example. I like Diva as a character, but even I can admit to not paying $34.99 just to get that particular skin. While I did mention Hero Mastery missions in last year's review, the Overwatch team are taking their time rolling out the missions for each individual hero. And while it was disappointing to see the PvE missions get cancelled, the Mastery missions were decent enough to say I would say it counts as the game's solo play content, as it gives players a chance to try out heroes they don't often play as. And while I have brought up the PvE missions multiple times throughout the video, it was a missed opportunity since the story was left on a cliffhanger that we won't even get to see because of it. And in my opinion, outsourcing the development of the PvE missions to another studio and making it a one purchase thing instead of paying for individual set of missions like Ninjala did with each chapter in, in a different pack meaning that you would purchase the PvE once and all the missions released afterwards you don't have to buy like Fortnite Save the World despite this minor setback Blizzard and the Overwatch team still managed to freshen things up with the new features that the second year has to offer. Overwatch 2 has had a mix of wrong and right moves made within the last year. I love the new heroes brought in to the second year, even if Malga didn't wield the ghost sharks like in his fan made concept art, but Venture being the first non-binary hero, and Juno having the most interesting background of the three new heroes, I still had enjoyment of what the past year offered in terms of heroes, and adding the mythic shop into the game which allowed players to have a choice between either the new mythic skin or a mythic skin from a past season. But the only wrong move I can say that the Overwatch team has made in the past year is cancelling the PvE missions. And I think it would have been for the best to get a different studio to handle them. Overwatch 2 still holds the collector perk from the previous two years, but it still doesn't reach certified gold like the 2016 original. And overall, I give Overwatch 2 since I did axe decimal numbers, a 9 out of 10. Overwatch 2 may not reach certified gold, mainly due to the decisions made by the development team, such as cancelling the hero missions, but it slowly continues to improve thanks to hero mastery missions being added and the mythic shop. But for the time being, my feelings on Overwatch 2 are still the same from last year. There is still room for improvement within the third year, but for now, I'm still the same on Overwatch 2 as I was last year. So guys, what did you think of my third annual review of Overwatch 2? I did forget to mention this at the end of my review of Astrobot, but I do have a Google form in the description below. So if there's anything you would like me to review, either it be a game, a retro game, a video game movie, a remake, or a paid DLC pack, you can now make a review request through a Google form. Like, I didn't want to take the Patreon approach when it came to people requesting reviews for my channel, because I know some people have like a paywall when it comes to requests, but, but my BB-8 House Review's request system will be different only because you don't have to pay to request a review. So if there's anything you would like me to review in the future, the form 
is right there for you to fill out. Because there are games I, I already am considering reviewing within the year of 2025, like Ghost of Tsushima, with the release of Ghost of Yotai, and both Horizon games with the Horizon Zero Dawn remaster. So, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and turn your notification bell on, so you don't miss another video like this one in the future. And I will see you all in a future video. BB-8, out.